And now for something completely different. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoffy Hour represent Brian Hoffy and Pastor. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Happy Hour starts in four, three, two, happy, happy, happy. This is Happy Hour with Happy. Oh my God. I think there's something that we need to discuss. First of all, I have Angel, who is the new promotions coordinator for everything at Beasley Media Group. What's happening? Yo, yo, what's up, what's up? What, what's going on, bro? How the hell are you? By the way, to everybody... If there's any technical difficulties, it's because we're using the new pivot room. Thanks to Rick Thomas. So I'm very grateful and very happy to be here. 856-49 Hoppy. It's 856-494-6773. Pharaoh, say hello. Yo, how we doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, and we got DJ Corrupted. What up? Let me turn your mic. What up? What's going on? I'm telling you, I'm getting used to this. I'm going to have to turn your mic up all the way because you're so quiet. I'm quiet? I'm not that quiet. You're pretty quiet, bro. I'm not that quiet. In you're, person, but... Now you're turning it up. Um, I have a higher body count than Brittany Renner. Everyone's going, oh my God, 35 guys for an OnlyFans model that dates NBA players? Boys, we got to be honest here. That's really low. Really low. Like, people are like trying to slut shame her. My body count, me, my body count is higher than Brittany Renner. What do you guys think about that? Um, you're definitely a slut. I mean, we've we've kind of covered that a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> I mean, if, if you got if you got above 35 right now, that means uh, you live in Tampa. <laughs> Hell yeah, I've lived oh, here man. my whole life. I got the audio here for everybody that uh, has not heard. She went on the Shannon Sharp show, who he's having to come up because he had to work with Skip Bayless, which sucked. But now he's not working with Skip, and uh, he talked to Brittany Renner, and everybody's freaking out, saying, "Oh my God, it's a lot of guys." Boys, that's not that many. That's not that many for a girl nowadays. I think that number is fabricated. Let's be let's be honest. Let's be. You think it's low? It has to be above eighty, in my opinion. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, just the way she moves publicly, yeah. Um, the way she finessed the uh, the baby out of the NBA player, yeah. Um, she's definitely not the type of woman that I think would have thirty five. Thirty five is a pretty low number. That's in not a girl you bring home to Thanksgiving dinner. No, that's the one you take home, home after the dinner. Why are you bringing her home to Thanksgiving She's dinner, bad. Angel? I don't care. She could say 35, 80, I'm still taking her to You know who's dinner. bad as hell? And I'll play the audio of Brittany Renner in a second. You know who's bad as hell? Is Travis Kelsey's ex. Forget, forget about Swift. His ex. Listen, if you're listening to my podcast, let's go on a date. She is so fine, bro. That's who he cheated on? Get the hell out of here. I don't find her attractive at all. I know that sounds very, like, I don't know, shock jockery. I don't think Swift's hot at all. It might be the money, the fame, the clout. If she was any other girl and you saw her in Ebor or St. Pete, you're not looking at her. She is the friend that's hanging out with the hot girls and has to go with the slim pickings at the end of the night. Just because she's, she's that type of ugly ass. Pharaoh, we had a discussion <laughs> a few weeks ago about you behaving on this podcast. You said, oh, I had an epiphany. I'm not going to do this anymore. And then you just bring your shock jackery here. Was that was that before uh, <laughs> we were going to go uh, on live air or what? I don't know. We just had one of our co-workers looking here like, why is everyone in here? <laughs> oh, man. Thanks again to Rick Thomas for allowing us to use the room. This is amazing. We were in the uh, little production room, and it was fantastic. Fascinating, dude. Doing a, a podcast with him, Tony, and Pharaoh. Like, it was so squishy. And you could hear the microphone being touched. Now I feel professional. I haven't felt this confident since I got laid two days ago. I had a girl drive, <laughs> I had a girl drive 70 miles to come to the Hoppy household. Yeah, <laughs> Think real, about that. that That's a, a half hour. a gas tank <laughs> to have sex with Ryan Hoppy. I mean, if you would have told me that 15 years ago, I would have not believed it. Also, I don't believe this clip right here from Brittany Renner. I've had sex with 35 guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. 
Oh Lord. <laughs> Impressive isn't Woo! the word. So if I'm judged for Anybody having- Anybody else need a shot of this? If I'm judged for having great taste. We are in the bar, so help yourself. <laughs> Shannon Sharp's like, yeah, let's go bang and end this show now. Drinking his Hennessy after that. He's like, I got to get ready. Do you guys think they hooked up after? I think totally. Shannon Sharp was the 36. What do you boys think? Oh, um, definitely. De definitely. She's, uh, what's the word? Do you think it's three? Do you think it's 35 or 350? Ooh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I say yes. let's be respectful now, Hoppy. I mean, you know, she could be, you know, thirty five hundred. She could be like Sukihana, you know, like who the hell is that? Come on, man, you got a Sukihana. They she got a song with Sexy Red, talks about sex all the time. Bro, I'm listening to Pretty Ricky from 15 years ago. I'm not new with the kids' music. <laughs> Look at me, I'm a 30 year old man. I'm not young anymore. Well, don't worry. Whenever we get off, I'm gonna show you who Suki Hana is. Yeah. You know, she's she's a total freak. She has videos on Twitter. She's my type of girl, right? Yeah, she's a total freak. Got that thick like body. Yeah, smack it. So Suki Hana, you know, went through a situation where yeah. you know she presents herself publicly, like you know she's I'm a, such an angel. Yeah, no, no, no. Like she's a sex symbol, mm -hmm. always talking about, um, you know, sex, you know, uh, intercourse, wow. what she would do to men, what she wants men to do to her, and she actually went through a um, uncomfortable situation with YK Osiris in a basketball game. Due to that image that she portrays, mm -hmm. which is when he went in and actually tried to kiss her in public in a basketball game. So I think that's, that might be the situation that's going on with Britney, where, you know, she portrays herself at this, as this sexual icon. And then everybody looks at her like, you know, she's active. But who knows? She might not be. Who was the player that knocked her up? She went through like three of the Hornets players. Didn't she date LaMelo? I think. Yeah, and uh, he definitely just smashed and dashed, which was a great LaMelo move. LaMelo seems like a boring lay, to be honest. I don't see LaMelo really putting in energy. He barely puts in energy on the, on the basketball court. Once it comes to the play-in tournament and you got to win a game, where the hell is LaMelo? Come on, now? Yeah. You really think he's laying the pipe? You know who's laying the pipe is that other guy that... Uh, oh, Zion? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Zion's got side chick on side chick there, bro. Yeah, Zion on sparing nobody. Dude... There's this website called blacksportsonline.com by this guy named Robert Little who gets all the info, and he created it after Joe Buck said that Randy Moss was a thug like 20 years ago or whatever. It's a great website to get all the info about the linked DMs. Bro, I might be like a little puppy dog compared to Zion. Zion is a dog, bro. His DM game, dude, oh, yeah. he's, he's got he's like apartments for his side checks, allegedly. No, he's paying. He's paying. You know, uh, yearly salaries to these women. Oh, it's crazy, and it's sad. You know, um, you, do you think he's wrapping it up? I don't. I mean, obviously he's not. No, obviously he's not. So, uh, you know, when you got that money and you got that accessibility to be able to, you know, maneuver through these women and, mm -hmm. and, and control them, it's cool. Sometimes I wonder which NBA players and rappers wear rubbers and which don't. Here's why. Seven, eight years ago, I interviewed DJ Who Kid when I met him at Sirius XM and he called in my show and he said him and 50 used to have boxes of condoms and they would just buy it. The family pack. Yeah. Uh, that was a weird comment. <laughs> Dwight Howard has like 12 baby moms. I don't know if you guys know that. I didn't Dwight know. Howard. I didn't know that. He literally huh. does. Google it. Dwight Howard also, uh, he also dabbles in other things. I don't know if you remember that. Dwight Howard's into <laughs> other things, man. Let's just say I would not be surprised if Dwight Howard's driven down Nebraska Avenue at night. Damn. He's a hornball like you. A what? A hornball. I'm a hornball, but he's into, um, uh -oh. let's just say transitioning. Oh, okay. So, uh, Allegedly. He has, he, he has 12 baby mamas and a boyfriend. That's crazy. <laughs> or one that used to identify. You know what I'm saying? One that went from Jeffrey to Janessa. You know what I'm saying? All right. I have DJ Corrupted here. Yes, sir. I got Angel here. Yes, I got Farrell here. Now, DJ Corrupted. Yes. And Angel, you were on the Howard Franklin, correct? When yes. this news clip I'm about to play when it went down? That's right. Yes. All righty. Here we go. And first tonight, the Howard Franklin Bridge is moving after parts of the bridge were closed following a crash and stabbing this morning. This is video from earlier. Troopers say a man and his wife...
stopped to help a driver slumped over in his car in the travel lanes, but couldn't get into his car, so they went to get something to break a window. And that's when troopers say the man woke up, drove forward, and crashed into the couple's car. They say he then tried to get around them, but hit another car passing by. Now, what did you guys see? All right, uh, let me see. Uh, I know, I know I woke up early. Something told me to leave early. And wow, you, so you kind of had that energy, like, I should probably leave early. No, 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 something told me in my <laughs> brain while I was sleeping, they said, Yo, just wake up and just leave early. Something's going to happen. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is, what it is. All right, so I get in my car and I drive. I drive down to 275 and I see the traffic's building up. And I was like, uh, uh, probably just something little something happened on, you know, on the side, you know, on the mm -hmm. emergency side. Yeah. But now, nah, when I get a little bit closer, I see firefighters, I see police, I see ambulance, I see everything on the left lane. And it was like three car collapsed on the left lane. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, why? Yeah. Like, that something happened that just people just crashed into like the same lane and went all the way to the left lane and then I see like it was shattered everything was damaged and I see people outside and it was just crazy and then I was like huh something's going on I don't know I just didn't know what happened but I just knew something like earlier something to just get out of here early just right. get out and go so That's I'm gonna it. play a little more of a clip and then I'll ask Angel what he saw right here on Happy Hour. By investigators say that driver, Patrick Scruggs, then pulled over and started stabbing the man. Troopers say the couple tried to intervene, but Scruggs then came at them. Why would you intervene? Especially when the guy's name is Patrick Scruggs. Hide in your car and put the seat back and act like you're not. Dude, why are you trying to be a superhero to a sociopath? I mean, come on now. Angel, would you do that? Hey, I'm going to help you out. I would be in my car hiding. Not to mention the guy was a former assistant U.S. attorney. attorney. <laughs> oh. You're telling me someone that's an attorney is a scumbag? Whoa! That never happens. Attorneys are trustworthy. They're totally not overpaid. Why are you guys being quiet? I'm speaking the truth on lawyers. <laughs> lawyers come in handy. Don't get me wrong. I think I think they haven't seen you in action. You know, like it takes a couple of uh, uh, episodes wow. to really see you on go. Why? Who for Angel? Yeah, just Angel just, seems shocked because I'm, I'm usually like, Tell I'm usually that. like, hey Angel, what's up? How are you? Good. I'm gonna go get pizza. Okay, see ya. And now I'm all hyper. Oh my god, eight five six forty nine happy. Oh my god, what's going on here? Hope we have Tony. Tony. Hey, Tony. 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 Yes, we brought my guy Nufo since he's from the DR. Yes. Some fried cheese, some salami. Yes, you know yes, what it is? yes. I mean, I got the got maximum guy, you know seven to midnight. Yes, sir, I got a blessed guy. Don't eat that by the Happy hour, mira young, dime young. All righty. All right. <laughs> Tony making it about him. Yo. I'm just kidding, Tony. <laughs> Special delivery, man. That was Tony Clemente from Maxima every night from 7 to midnight. I hung out with him last night for a little bit. He's a good dude, man. I brought with Tony, man. He's a, he's a pretty cool dude. Nah, nah, he's a great guy. I ain't gonna lie. Especially, DJ, especially, go especially he gave me cheese. <laughs> That's part of the, the Dominican dude. breakfast. So for people that have been listening since the new edition of this show since July... The guy talking right now, DJ Corrupted and Ferro Felipe, the best DJ to come out of New York City. All the names you have. You are the chopped cheese, man. Where's our chopped cheese? Well, what happened was when I was on, on my way back yeah. from Florida, he, he ate it. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the way. Just on the way, but back. I ate it. <laughs> was it really? I That is adorable, bro. I'm serious. I'm so serious. <laughs> oh, no. I I know you're serious. There was no part of me that went, oh, he's lying about eating the chopped cheese during his 20-hour drive. I believed you from the first second. I had no debate in my mind that you were not telling the truth because you're a very truthful guy. You give honest advice. I want to tell you, Angel, you weren't there for it, but last week when, when we were cleaning out the cars and all that and me and him went to the uh, garbage dump to drop everything off, I started crying in a car. I had like an existential crisis and literally Felipe like calmed me down. I was like holding it in when I don't, we're think, I don't think his name is Felipe. <laughs> no, no, <man. laughs> it's his name today. It's because I'm Spanish. Is that's what you call me Felipe? Because I'm Spanish? I have a hard time saying <laughs> inferno. I just want to say corrupted. Can I just say corrupted? Yes, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah just say corrupted. This is your <laughs> you can say whatever you want to say at this point. <laughs> Bro, I started crying, dog. It was weird, dude. I've been crying a lot. I think I'm on the three day in a row of not crying. I gotta get you a sad boy hat for sure. For sure. 
I wonder what Drake song I would be. I'd be like, um, not fancy. I don't know that. What's that emotional one from like 2010? Oh, like uh, Marvin's Room. I was yes, say that. yes, <laughs> Marvin's Room. <laughs> I give him Marvin's room for sure. You can yeah. call me Hizzy, not Drizzy. <laughs> I like that. I'm going to come up with that. <sighs> what is the meaning of life? What are we doing here? Do you ever wonder, like, Angel, when you woke up this morning, did you think this would be going on? You thought you'd be no, hanging out at the front desk of West, doing some prize sheets, hanging out with Tyson, learning more about the job, even though you're doing great at it. Did you ever think you would be sitting here when you woke up this morning? I didn't think I was going to be learning your body count today. <laughs> I can't believe I said my body count. When I saw Brittany Renner, though, going back to that, when I saw it was 35, I was like, that's low. Now, if it was 350, that'd be different. What do you think Taylor Swift's body count is? Probably higher than Brittany's. I think so as well. I agree. Yeah. I feel like because she's so innocent and so likable that we don't realize that she gets passed around like a blunt. That girl's been around the block, bro. And have you seen the picture of her with the rug burns? There was a picture of her sitting somewhere, and she had rug burns on her knee. Oh, yeah, they said Travis putting her to work already. Dude, Travis must just go at it. Because you know all the people she's dated, like the guy from Twilight and Joe Jonas, they're probably gentle lovers. They're doing missionary and just hanging out. And you know Travis Kelsey's got partial CTE, so he needs to get the aggression out. He's like, oh, yeah! That was a marketing move. I am so sick of hearing about it. Because it doesn't seem like a believable relationship. Bro, this man's jerseys went up 400% in sales. 400%. That's crazy. And his new bounce she wore went up like ridiculously. Like, bro, that was definitely a marketing move for sure. You know what I'm wondering? I've been thinking about. So Swifties buy tickets very fast. That fan base does. What if the whole playoff series is just Swifties? That could happen. Think about... A lot, of, a lot of these Swifties come from like trust funds where they have rich parents where they're able to pay for 500 bucks a ticket on Ticketmaster at once. What if the whole playoff is just like, she wear short shirt, I wear t-shirts or whatever. That, that might be it, bro. That was the only song by her I liked. None of the other ones. Nah, she definitely has some bangers, but... what's We're Never Getting Back Together was a banger. Yeah. I mean, she didn't write it. She just sung it, but... Of course she didn't. Hey, it's, it still moves on. But you know what's a very hot topic right now? What? Super Bowl 2020. Is it four? Yes. yes. Usher. Halftime show. Usher. Usher. So Usher has been named the artist for the 2024 halftime show yes. for the Super Bowl. What's you guys' opinion? Is there anybody who could do it better? What's going on? I love it. But I can't wait to hear the boomers that don't realize that he's been around for a quarter century. Because like my uh, uncle, that's like almost seventy, thought that like Eminem and Dre were like new rappers because he doesn't listen to rap. So there's gonna be a lot of angry boomers that are like, "Why are they using this pop music from like two days ago when they don't realize that it's twenty years old?" Because they don't get a concept of millennial time. So there's gonna be a lot of backlash. I think all millennials and some Gen Xers will like it. Like someone like Tyson will like it. Mm-hmm. And someone like Mo Bounds or Rick Thomas, people that with good taste. But a lot of these boomers that have no good taste, it's gonna be hated on a little bit. So you're saying people like MJ wouldn't like it? I think MJ would like it as well because he played it back in the day on FLZ. You know who I don't think would like it? You see those memes back in the day of like, uh, or the memes where it's like all the people with the Trump hats? Yeah. That that type of crowd. Oh, uh, racist someone people. That, yeah, someone that listens to like, <laughs> what is it? What did you say, racist? <laughs> yes, that's kind of what I'm going for, Pharaoh. I didn't want to say it without saying it. No, you, you, this is a podcast. You got to keep it 100. I feel like that's that's the that's the highlight of this. You have to say it how it is, and that's what people like. They like it raw, just like you know, gross. <laughs> they do like it raw. Eight five six forty nine happy. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift mm-hmm. set the internet on fire, and you know what? Their brands have never been bigger. All right, I got to skip over this real quick because of copyright. I promise we'll get to the point right now. It's hilarious how much traction this has actually got. Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, Katy Perry. Kill Mary Kiss. Taylor Swift would be the kiss. So were TNT Endgame all along? Well, Sunday wasn't their first date. Per our source, they have hung out before while she's been enjoying some time off from touring and both have a lot in common and they are having a great time getting to know each other. But 
You know what's weird is when you're doing that whole, hey, do you want to hang out and you have sex with the girl you just met? It really is weird after the deed. You're like, so what do you do for a living? Like you don't find out beforehand. I bet their discussions after sex, they're probably going to realize they have nothing in common. He literally went on his podcast and was like, I want to date her. We were talking about that two weeks ago. I got the friendship bracelet. Yeah, but if she took the chance on him, that means that she wasn't doing anything. She let the hype of the podcast really get to her. And, you know, it, it, it might not be anything serious. You know TMZ is going to highlight yeah. everything and, and kind of blow it up. It might not be something super serious. They're just hanging out. They're rich. They don't have anything to worry about. Well, they can travel anywhere in the world. And they're just, you know what I'm saying? Going Here's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if this is going to end in him cheating because his ex is going out saying, oh, he cheated on me. And these Swifties were like, what if he's a changed man? I've hung around NFL players before. They all cheat. All of them. Shit, even you cheat. I don't cheat. How do I cheat? Whenever I've been in a relationship, I've had girls want to have sex with me. When I'm single, they don't want to have sex with me. What a concept. They have no integrity and their father never loved them. Why do you think I cheat? You're just a dog, bro. Like it's, it's, I'm a it's dog. I'm not, I'm not locked down with somebody, though. All right, so, okay, I feel you on that. What about you guys? Are you guys cheaters? Are you guys... What, 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 what? <laughs> you guys scumbag? Wow. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't really expect y'all to be like, yeah, I'm a super cheater, you know what I'm saying? Like, just highlight it, but... Yeah. But, you know, like, it's, it's 2023. The, the, the roles are really reversed these days. So... W- women are the cheaters now. They really, They're really are. savage than men, for sure. Oh, my God. Women are not sparing anybody these days. If they find somebody who has more money than you, more clout, who who gives you who gives them a, a, a way better uh, aura overall, yeah, you know, like you, you might as well just pack it up. Here's what I'm wondering: I'm wondering if even emotional cheating is a thing, like kind of talking to somebody but not, you know, cheating. <laughs> but I mean, eh. it's not. But at the same time. I feel like even even us as guys, yeah, we we emotionally cheat. You know, like you got to think about it. There's only males and females. If you're not talking to guys, you're talking to a girl. It may not be in that type of way, but at the same time, you 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 are exchanging some type I of communication. I really think I might be the only person in Tampa that doesn't cheat. I swear to God, I've I would have girls that were listeners at my old job want to have sex with me, and I was in a relationship in 2018. I didn't even reply. Then I hit them up after me and my second girlfriend broke up. Crickets. I swear. I might be the most loyal person in Florida. Everybody's like, oh, I did this and that. I'm like, I was at home watching uh, anime with my ex. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been through a lot, boys. This is becoming my therapy session. I think I say more on this podcast than I do in therapy. So. So what? So pretty much just girls like girls these days. It's insane. Everyone's bisexual when it comes to girls, not guys. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is. Every girl's like, I think every girl deep down wants to have sex with a girl. They just don't want to admit it. It seems like every girl. There are some really heterosexual conservative girls, but I'm telling you, it seems like girls just want to hook up with girls now. It's the liquor. Every girl's kissed their best friend. Yeah. I feel like, this is going to sound so weird. I feel like my mom's the only one that's like literally not kissed a girl. Like my mom is so like, well, waited till marriage and that stuff. Back in the day, that that wasn't a thing, you know. Mm. Like, like these days, like live it up, yeah. Like you know, you, you see, you see the club videos. Yeah. Gr- it's girls on girls, and most of the time, it's the young girls that are pushing this agenda because yeah. they're seeing it everywhere. Uh, they see that men ain't shit because we ain't shit. Uh, girls ain't shit, so we all shit though. We all shit, and then <laughs> girls just feel more comfortable with other girls because they yeah. they empower that bullshit behavior. Yeah. If, if you see a group of girls. They're always in the same mindset. What's and the mindset? Either being s- <gasps> e- either being hardworking, you know, yeah. it, whether it be negative or positive, the group of girls that girls hang out with, yeah. they share something in companionship. Wow. Sure. That was deep thoughts by Pharaoh. Yeah. That was really deep of you. I'm I'm impressed that you said that. That's what that. she said. Oh. <laughs> she had to grab her toy for that. Uh <laughs> Corrupted. You got any comment on this? You've been laughing in the corner. Because You're a little chuckle fest. What's happening? Yes, because it's actually really true. <laughs> it's what? It's true. I mean, it's really true. Just because this this, this generation now, it's yeah. just like 
they just care about themselves. They just don't care about the other person. Like you know, it's you know what's like, funny? You know, like how like all these people that got married in like 1970 are like married for 50 years. Yeah, that's dead. Oh we, yeah, for no, for I, a millennial to do that, we would have to get married tomorrow or by 40 and live to 90. That is that so is true. dead. <laughs> the whole oh we're married for a half a century dead. They Gen Z's they, not bringing that back. No. The only thing no. that, that that will be 50 is how, how many girls they have sex with in a year. There's nothing about 50 years of a relationship that's dead. It's in the ground. It's not coming back. At all. Never. 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 Ever, ever, ever. Did I say never, ever? I just think we have too many options. Or would our grandparents have done this if they had options back in the day? Were they just so bored and chilling that they didn't have any options? They have any options. I think social media definitely changed life in yeah. general. Like, imagine if your grandparents had Tinder and Bumble and Hinge. I just blew your mind. Yeah. I mean, not really, because look, <laughs> think about it. Grandparents, yeah. spe- especially uh, grandfathers, were yeah. already cheaters. Like, that that hasn't changed throughout history. Yeah. Grandparents were always cheaters. Grandmothers were always the loyal ones in the crib. That's true. They were in the crib. Always, yeah. They were That's cooking. That's taking, a good point. Yeah, yeah. Taking care of the children. What social media did. What and, did it do? And 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 what what pretty much the new the new social media era was give empowerment to women. Yeah. It gave women a fair chance. It began with the Me Too movement. Mm-hmm. Against mm-hmm. men. So then now men have always been throughout throughout history what are they the been? pieces of shits <gasps> but then now women have the uh the torch they have the upper hand and the torch it hurts bro yeah they're they're <laughs> they didn't come to play yeah they, they came to came they came to knock motherfuckers out with, <gasps> with, with, with what they do so it's like if we ever get on the radio we won't use that language they're very open with English? it as well they're very white, Angel? Oh, they're very open with it as well. They'll tell you they're looking for a dude with money and shit like that. Like, yeah. What do you guys think about buying like a fancy first, um, for a first date being a meal? What do you think about that? Like an expensive meal or even like Olive Garden. You guys into that or is that too much? Is Olive Garden too much? No, just like going out to dinner on a first date. I've done it. I've done it's it. A good, good did, way to talk. I did Applebee's as well. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, Applebee's is two for one. It's good or whatever the deal is. Uh, <laughs> Did you get laid at the end of those dates, or was it a waste of forty five dollars and a tip? I mean, not or did, all. Or did you give it a tip? Not all the time. I would say a good sixty percent of the time. Yeah, you got laid. Yes, dude. What is this pimp game, bro? It's not pimping. It's no, just- no, it's a pimp game. You got. You're being humble, and that's why you have the pimp game. You have the pimp game because you're not talking about the pimp game. You're not like me going around, hey, guys, I had sex last night. No, you're quiet about it. <laughs> and that's what's dangerous. He's a silent killer. He really is. Uh, well, my last two dates will tell you otherwise because <laughs> I didn't get anywhere both times. Well, that's because now it's hard to get laid because girls in their 30s, oh, we want to settle down even though we're talking to nine dudes at once. Get out of <laughs> here. It's not even a thing sitting down anymore. <laughs> It's not even a thing anymore. <laughs> no, but 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 Hoppy, go but go back to the point of you know the dinner situation. I of feel no, like of I no feel return. like yeah. out of respect for the women, which we should have. You yes, know, we, we love women here in this in this podcast. Of course we do. No matter what, even if you do or if you're not going to get, you know, I'm saying the buns, you should always, always, always take him out to dinner. You know, just as as a sign of respect. If it's a woman that you really are interested in, that's the key. You got to take. You got to take them to like Ruth Chris, you know, it's not like an all the time thing. Yeah. But if you really want to show out to the woman that. That's Go to like meat market, yeah, hang out with Roxanne you know, and her husband. No, not, not, not even that. You know, uh, Ruth Chris got the, got the, got the two for a hundred. You like Ruth Chris because you worked there. Yeah, and 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 you know the food's good. <laughs> the food some, is good. There's some low key spots in Tampa you can go. Yeah, Orlando likes it. Uh, Davi likes it. Everybody in the station goes to Ruth Chris. You know what I'm saying? With a nice. little sneaky link. Well, they're all full time making great money. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> we're human beings. We should at the end of the day, but the difference is we're part time. Happy hour. Happy hour. What it 
it cost them to put back together that cat Steve Austin. Now the far right is bionic. Over six million tracks with ten million topics. I'm fiber optic, crystal clear with my projection. Whack them seas get clothesline when they walk across my intersection. They need protection, some guidance, some right direction. A job center with application for a new profession. Never set for nothing less. I blaze contests and set shops for paydays. In strange ways, life twist and turn. Word to gangstar in this business, thriller hard to earn. I format attack, new knack technique. Speak with a passion on wax and tape and CD. Mad niggas front for paper and switch like a bitch in and out like a crossfader. All I know is how to rock shit. They say the hotter the MC, the hotter the spot. Rock shit down. It's the coming of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit down. It's the coming of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit down. It's the coming. I mean. Of the bionic, the far right hit a lock. See, I got books of lyrics on deck like Tash. Pocket full of cash, ready to bounce, roll and splash. C to and hash, pro tour in the masters. Grab the mic, flex my wrist and hit like Sambris. Handle this, make you believe like an evangelist. That real MCs are coming to reclaim Los Angeles. And hence I stand a chance to finally get my time to shine. In the golden state, like spree while out the half. This beat is hot. And make me lock like astronaut. Make Hey Rule set that shit for my peoples when we blow spots. Pause, freeze. My steeds rose like ease. Beat 12 trees and seven seas. If you didn't know, champ, the far by Hey Rule's a lowlands brother from the liquid camp. It's the coming of the bionic. The far by hit a lock shit down. It's the coming of the bionic. The far by hit a lock shit down. It's the coming of the bionic. The far right here to lock shit down. Yeah. It's the coming of the bionic. The far right here to lock shit down. Yeah. Seeds get damaged like civilized to savage. Sharp lyrics cut deep wounds. These niggas need bandages. They can't handle this Los Angeles relentless pressure. Full court, measure for measure. I'm like Pacino, a game plan can be no. Every verse starts with defense first, like a casino. Every minute, every hour, I use brain power. For Mr. Space Shuttle Challenger, I devour. I tower like Eiffel, bust all verses like rifles. Bust all bullets through flesh, unless you're wearing a vest. And even then, I still enter the human form of a splinter. The summer, fall, spring, and winter. Liquid crew member, champion contender. Holy like the month of December, the rhyme prototype. Lock shit down. It's the coming, coming of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit down. It's the coming of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit down. It's the coming of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit down. It's the coming of the bionic. The far right hit a lock shit down. All right, boys, we just got a few more minutes here. Anything you want to say, any, anything you feel like saying, anything you want to say, anything, anything, I got a topic. anything you got to say, Angel? I got a question for you. What's the question? Talking to the microphone. This is the end of the show. So I'll if you're listening back. this far, sorry. Um, what's up? My question for you. What is it? Biggest pet peeves for women. Um... When they start the conversation and they're like, I'm not the type of girl that ghosts on guys and then they ghost on you. They're projecting what they're going to do. Every time a girl starts talking about, oh, guys ghost on me, she's saying she's going to ghost on you. That's all? What about you, Angel? This girl I'm dating currently. <gasps> oh. Whoa. Oh. She, she better not be listening 50, 59 care. minutes in. I told her nope. myself. Oh, no. What did she do? Anytime we have a conversation. Mm-hmm. She'll be like, you got all these hoes. Whoa. So you bring up other women all the time and always call it, like saying, oh, you got all these hoes? Yeah. That is annoying to me. What about you, Farrell? All right. So the question was uh, women's biggest pet peeve. peeve. Your pet peeve for women. My pet peeve for women. Um, what is it? <clears throat> what do I... I feel like women these days expect a lot from... Let's ask Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> They really expect a little too much from guys these days. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to just throw it in on, on the nightlife. You know, like when women pop out, they expect the guy to pay for all the bottles, for oh their entries, God. yes, for their hookah. Yes. Like, like I'm sorry, but it, it, especially if you're coming with more girls, someone got to shake. Yo. Because these bottles is not cheap. And, you yeah. know. 
and, and and I see corrupted. I'm seeing corrupted a little bit more often, and, and he knows what I'm talking about. Girls Jeez. always want to come out, hang out, and you know it's cool. Yes, guys should always you know uh, uh you know put a bottle on the table and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But don't be expecting a free ride. Women pop out with literally a li- a lipstick and an ID. What about you, corrupted? My pet peeves, huh? Yeah. Let's see what I have here. You got what a whole do you list have here? over there. This uh, is crazy. You what? Wow. You've got a whole list over there. I know. I have like, <laughs> like probably like 45. <laughs> but I'll give you my top, top one. Please. Uh, the, actually, it's actually it's related from what you just said, Ryan, about this uh, text message. But it's like, uh, just, why would you be so dry at the beginning getting to know each other? And then from there, you just disappear. It's like I had a girl what? tell me last week that she had a fun time on a date but doesn't view me romantically, and it didn't bother. I go, thank you. Now I know you're not the one. She was also 10 years older than me. You could you could tell by the, you know, by the, like, uh, the way they text. And the way, if they talk about other dates on the first date, That's they so cool. view you as just another date. They don't respect you. Or if they talk about having a threesome after you ask them to be your girlfriend, they don't respect you. Honestly. <laughs> Tomorrow at noon, I'm going to counseling on call.net to talk to my therapist. I talk to you once a week. And if you go to counseling on call.net and you tell him I sent you, he'll give you some great advice. All the uh, therapists out there. I really need it. But I feel like when I talk to my shrink, I don't say as much as I say here. And I have a lot of listeners on this. So I'm literally not tell- I'm telling the billions of listeners I have. Everything about my life, and I feel like I just shoot the shit with my shrink. A weird concept. My life's a weird concept, though. I really need to get on this med. I need to call Walgreens and go, hey, can I drive out to Clearwater to get the med? So I'm feeling loopy, bro. It's like I got a headache. It's like a bowling ball is going back and forth, and it feels like I'm like in like a, like a video game. It doesn't feel like this is real life. But maybe that's what made the show so good. Pharaoh. Before we end the show, what's your final thoughts? What do you want to tell the listeners of Happy Hour that are listening on BigMamaRadio.com? What is your final thought, Farah? I want them to know that this podcast is nothing but the truth, our personal lives, our experiences, our ideas, um, and our personal aura. And, you know, we all have different perspectives, but we all just want to share with you guys and make sure that you guys, the listener, are always more than welcome to come back, reach out, and share your thoughts as well. Angel? (laughs) (laughs) Anything? I didn't expect you to come to me as well. Uh, Yeah, man. Just expect a good time every time you listen in, honestly. And to be shocked as well with uh, Ryan's crazy comments and body counts. Hell yeah. I got a higher body count than Brittany Renner. Um, What about you? Corrupted. This is the final thing. No, no, no. This is the final thought. I'm not going to talk anymore. Go to Hoppy, RyanHoppyRadio.com, search me up, whatever. You have the floor. This is it. No, this I'm- current moment will never happen again. So how the hell do you want to end this show? You want, you want, me, to, want me to say what I just said of, of, of the air? Sure. Just know <laughs> that if I tag you that's and there's a girl that's really digging you and wants to be cuffed up, she might not want to cuff up for Halloween. That's fine. I don't really don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You have such an innocent presence, but really, you're a dog. What is it? Oh, uh, I cheat, and I'm proud of it. I don't. I'm not all the time. Happy hour. Happy hour.